Hello dear students. Today we are going to read and understand the chapter Landscape of the Soul from your book Hornbill. That is the fourth chapter of your book written by Natalie Chaudhry. So this chapter is basically about the art. And we all know that what is the importance of art in our life. When we see around us, everything is art. And art has some different feeling and emotions attached to it. It can be said sometime it takes you near a spiritual world also. So this chapter is basically about uh, the art form. And it also tells you about the difference between Chinese and European art. So let's start it. A wonderful old tale is told about the painter Wu Daozi who lived in the 18th century. So this is from China. The Wu Daozi, he is a painter there in 18th century. His last painting was a landscape commissioned by the Tang Emperor Zhuan Zong to decorate a palace wall. So the Emperor um, Tang, he, he told him, he gave him the order to make a painting for his palace wall. The master had hidden his work behind a screen so only the emperor would see it for a long while. So when the this artist, the master, he made the painting, he hid it behind a screen because he wanted to show only to emperor. For a long while, the emperor admired the wonderful scene, discovering forests, high mountains, waterfalls, clouds floating in an immense sky. Men on hills, path, birds in flight, means these all the things he could see in the painting. Look sir, said the painter. So, so many things were there. Forest was there, mountains were there, waterfalls were there, clouds were floating in the sky, men, people were climbing on the hills. So many things were there. So the painter said, look sir. In this cave at the foot of the mountain dwells a spirit. He showed him a mountain and he said, in the foot of the mountain, you can see that cave, there dwells a spirit. The painter clapped his hands and the entrance to the cave opened. So he was showing the painting. He said, there lives a spirit in this cave. So he clapped and the door of the cave opened. Please let me show your majesty the way. The painter entered the cave but the entrance closed behind him. So the painter entered the cave and the door of the en this entrance of the cave, it closed. And before the astonished emperor could move or utter a word, the painting had vanished from the world. And before the term, means the emperor could not speak anything, he would not say even a word and the pen painting disappeared, vanished from the wall. Not a trace of Wu Daozi brush was left. Nothing was there on the wall, not even a mark of a brush and the artists were never seen again in this world so this is the power of painting this is a power of art means when the when any person is mastered in anything may it be painting may it, the, may it be music may it be any skill they are so lost in that 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 it takes them to a different spiritual world and so this story also tells about this so um, that our painter he has gone inside the painting and he never came back. He has gone in a different world of art. Such a story played an important part in Chinese classic education. The book of Confucius and Zhu Hangzi are full of them. If you read these two writers of Chinese philosophers, they were. If you read their book, you will find so many stories like this. They help the master to guide his disciple in the right direction. And they, they help. Mm, the master, you can see the teacher, they help the teachers to guide their disciple, disciple, disciple means students to follow the right direction. Beyond the anecdote, anecdote means these stories, small story, they are deeply revealing of the spirit in which art was considered. Contrast this story or another famous one about a painter who would not draw the eye of a dragon he had painted for fear it would fly out of the painting. And this story is there in which an artist he drew a dragon but he did not draw, um, draw the eyes of the dragon. Why he did not draw the eyes of, eyes of the dragon? He thought that if I will draw the eyes of the, um, eyes of the dragon it would fly. With an old story from my native lander that I find most representative of the western painting so this is a representative of western painting 
the painter did not draw the eyes of the dragon because he thought it would fly another one in 15th century antwerp a master blacksmith called quentin metzel fell in love with the painter's daughter so he was a blacksmith and um, uh, his name quentin metzel he fell in the love with um, a painter's daughter the father would not accept a son in law in such a profession so quentin sneaked into the painter's studio and painted a fly on his latest pen so quentin came to the painter's studio and he made a fly there with such delicate realism delicate realism means when we draw something the, this is the reality quality of art when we draw something it looks it is real that the master tried to sweat it away before he realized what had happened so he made the fly and he wanted to move it away fly it away from there but he could not do it quentin was immediately admitted as an apprentice into his studio so um, he married his beloved and went on to become one of the most famous painter of the ages then he agreed that yes he is a very good painter he is a master so um, he got married and after that he became a very um, big and famous painter of his age these two stories illustrate that each form of art is trying to achieve a perfect illusionistic illusion you know illusionistic means likeness illusionistic likeness means something which is not real but uh, it looks like um, something which is not real but it looks like real thing and that's uh, uh, in, in it's like a illusion it resemble resembles something like it is uh, real so that is known as illusionistic likeness in europe the essence of inner life and spirit in asia so this is the essence of life and spirit because art is beyond everything art takes you to your different life it takes you to your inner life it takes you to a spiritual life when you are deeply involved in that then only you understand about the real meaning of art in the chinese story the emperor commissions a painting and apprentice its outer appearance but the artist reveals to him the true meaning of his work so when in the chinese story the painter the artist reveals the true meaning of the work whatever he does it it feels like it is um true real okay the emperor may rule over the territory he has conquered but only the artist knows the way within the emperor may own so many territories but artist only knows what is there within let me show the way the dao a word that means both the path or the method and the mysterious work of the universe the painting is gone but the artist has reached his goal beyond any material material appearance so in that i uh, see the um, dauzi's painting also um, the painting was done it was made it was made very beautifully and painting was gone from there but that artist who made the painting he reached his real goal which was beyond any material appearance he, he was lost in that he has gone in that and he has gone in that world of art so that was the real thing which the artist want it's not about the materialistic thing which are around mm -hmm. us we have done in the last stanza about the line the emperor may rule over the territory he has conquered but only the artist knows the way within so it means the emperor rules over the territory which he has and which he conquered but artist knows the way within which shows him a word that means both um, path or the method let me show the way the dao which means a word mean the both path or the method and the mysterious works of the universe because the painting is gone but the artist has reached its goal because the the goal of artist is totally different which we have done in the story that he went inside the painting and he never came back he received he his goal whatever he wanted next stanza a classical chinese landscape is not meant to reproduce an actual view as would a western figurative painting so the classical chinese landscape is not meant to reproduce an actual view it does not show you the actual view as would a western figurative painting western figurative painting what is there in figurative painting means painting uh, does derived from the real object the western 
painting it derives from the it is made from a from a real object whereas the european painter wants you to borrow his eye and look at a particular landscape exactly as he saw it and the european painter he wants you to see the landscape and see the painting and he wants you to see in the same way as he has seen the painting from a specific angle the chinese painter does not choose a single viewpoint the european painting it uh, painter asks you to see from the same viewpoint but the chinese painter they do not do that his landscape is not a real one and you can enter it from any point then travel in it you can see it from any point and then travel on it the artist creates a path for your eyes to travel up and down then back again in the chinese painting you can see the you can see up and down you can see around and then come back to that point in leisurely movement you can enjoy it this is even more true in the case of horizontal scroll in which the action of slowly opening one section of the painting then rolling it up to move on to the other hand adds a dimension of time which is unknown in any other form of painting so you can see it horizontally also starting from one place ending in another one so which is actually not there in any other painting it also requires the active participation of the viewer the the viewer the person who is watching the painting his it needs his active participation he has to see everything carefully to decide at what pace he would travel through the painting and the person who is viewing the painting he decide that how what will the pace how quick he will be to um, he he will see the painting a participation which is physical as well as mental it need the physical participation also and mental participation also he should be physically and mentally present to see the painting the chinese painter the chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes he wants you to enter his mind and the chinese painter does not want you to see only from the eyes he wants you to enter in his mind whatever he means the landscape is an inner one a spiritual and conceptual space landscape when you see it's an inner one is it a spiritual one and conceptual means uh, relate uh, related with the abstract then the factual representation something abstract not depend on the fact but something abstract the concept is expressed as sensory sensory you must have heard japan from japan sensory literally mountain water which used to gather represent the word landscape so the concept is uh, of sensory sensory is literally mountain water and uh, which used to gather present to word landscape you can see you must have seen the landscape more, more mountains are there waters are water is there more than two elements of an image these represent two complementary poles so in landscape it represent two complementary poles reflecting the daoist view of the universe the mountain is yang reaching vertically towards the heaven the mountain is given name yang and it reach, reaches vertically to heaven and stable warm and dry in the sun while the water is yin mountain are, mountain is yang and the water is yin horizontally and resting on the earth so mountain they reach towards the heaven you must have seen in the landscape they go upwards and water remain downside horizontally it take it it is it rest on the earth fluid moist and cool the interaction of yin the receptive feminine aspect of universal energy and its counterpart yang active and masculine so mountains are taken as masculine and water is taken as a feminine is of course a fundamental notion of those so it was uh, this is the theory of those the mountains are male and the water is female what is often overlooked is an essential third element the middle void where the interaction taken place and what is missing in this is a middle void middle void means the gap where they both meet this can be compared with the yogic practice of pranayama breathe in retain breathe out the su suspension of breath is the void where meditation occurs he said we breathe in we breathe out but in between what happen that is the void that blank space that is meditation the middle void is essential nothing can happen without it and it's very important the middle void is very important they cannot be you cannot do anything without it hence the importance of the white unpainted space in chinese landscape and this is a this is important the unpainted white space also is very important in chinese landscape Uh, this is also where man finds a fundamental role
in that space between heaven and earth and this is the fundamental role of the man those who live in the earth begin that space between heaven and earth because we live the man live between heaven and earth he becomes the conduit of communication between both poles of the universe so man who lives in the earth we human being we people are the channel who communicates between uh, heaven and the earth between both poles of the universe what are the both poles of the universe the heaven and the earth his presence is essential even if it is only suggested he said his presence is essential this is essential it's very important mm, it's very important to have human in the earth the present of uh, human presence of human is very important and if it is only suggested far from being lost or oppressed by the lofty peaks if it is only suggested also then also it is very important far from being lost or oppressed by the lofty peaks uh, he is in Fran francois chang wonderful expression the eye of the landscape so francois chang he said he, he gave a very wonderful expression he said the eye of the landscape who is the eye of the landscape the human being is the eye of a landscape he is the eye of the landscape who can connect both the poles uh, this heaven and the earth so this is all about the chapter landscape of the soul